um, um, Ed just gave you kind of an overview of the, the NIH, um, the NIH guidelines. And so we've already talked about some of these in the context of how you write your proposal. Now you guys get to put yourself on the other side and think about um, um, how this will impact a review of a proposal. And, and as Ed mentioned, you know, that what I'm going to talk about here in terms of effective writing of a review is it, our concepts that are, are you know, our, our strategies really that you could use in any, in any review situation. And that includes, of course, um, reviews of your own papers. Um, so it goes really well beyond um, just a review of the proposals in this class. Um, so so I'll, I'll try to generalize where I can, but I am going to try to give specifics on what you'll do for the last two assignments of our class, which are the peer review assignments. Okay, so as you know, I like to do, I have a myth for you. Um, so in this myth, it says writing an effective peer review is not as important as writing an effective proposal. And I guess I would argue that they're both pretty important. Feedback on our scientific ideas is just as important as the ideas themselves. Without clear, concise, and impactful comments on our research, we can't improve our ideas to make our research as successful as possible for society. So we should use the same high standards of writing our proposals and reviews of other people's proposals. And so, you know, the peer review process in science um, which of course extends to publications, is a really important process that, really, that ensures that all of, us science, all of us scientists are doing the best job we can to create the best um, research out outcomes. Okay, so um, I'm gonna introduce you guys um, to a template we would like for you to use for this class. So Ed just talked about sort of the general NIH criteria. Um, we have created a, a template in Word that we would like for you to use. Um, we've created it for the same reason that the NIH created their own template. And that is because we want to make sure that the um, criteria and the review are standardized in a way that everybody feels like they're getting kind of a fair and equal review. Um, and so actually, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to go to the review template itself. So this review template, I've already posted the, uh, earlier today, maybe just an hour ago. So, so um, if you haven't looked recently, it should be there now. This is a template for your proposal review. It's a Word document. So you are welcome to just start writing in this template um, right here. The template you see has four different sections. Um, after you write the name of the student who you're reviewing, this is the proposal's name, not your name, the proposal writer's name. You're then going to judge, um, judge, excuse me, you're going to provide comments, constructive, useful comments on the three criteria that we talked about in class when you were writing your proposal, that is significance, innovation, and approach. Remember, we're not judging, um, we're not um, reviewing the investigator or the environment like NIH would because those are not really as relevant to this candidacy exam situation. We also threw in a last um, criteria because the goal of this particular review is to help all of you to make great proposals. We thought of including this issue of grantsmanship. You can see for each one of these criteria, there is a strength and a weaknesses bullet points. Um, we would like for you to write at least three uh, in each one of these criteria. So th at least three comments to significance. They could be strengths or weaknesses. At least three for innovation. At least three, at least three for approach. At least three for grantsmanship. Um, but we really strongly encourage you to dive really deeply into these proposals, think about them, and provide as many comments as you can. And I'll give you some tips on how to write constructive comments um, in a moment. Um, we also leave this last section here where you can give other overall comments about sort of your general impressions. Um, I know that this was um, a, a place where I, as a reviewer of your proposals, um, as a faculty reviewer, I use this just to give kind of general guidance. So this is the format we would like for you to use. This is the template. Download the template and use it for your review. You are literally going to write in, you know, in these um, in these areas what um, what you think about the proposal. Okay, so let's go back to um, the presentation. So just going back, 
to um, those the criteria that we've talked about in the past. I, I, we also included in, in this um, section just kind of a little guidance on what each meant. So significance, does the project address an important problem or a critical barrier to progress in the field? If the aims of the project are achieved, how will scientific knowledge, technical capabilities under clinical practice be improved? How will successful completion of the aims change the concept, methods, technologies, treatment, services, or preventative interventions that drive this field? And let me say that these are the exact words of NIH, so um, I did not change any of that. Innovation, does the application change and seek to shift current research paradigms by utilizing novel theoretical concepts, approaches, and methodologies, instrumentation, or interventions? Are the concept approaches or methodologies, imp instrumentations or interventions novel to one field of research or novel in a broad sense? Is the refinement, improvement, or new application of theoretical concepts, approaches, or methodologies, instrumentation, or interventions proposed? So, um, so this is on innovation. Approach, uh, um, for the approach, are the overall strategy, methodology, analyses, well-reasoned and appropriate to accomplish the specific aims of the project? So those are, of course, related to the experiments. And then finally, we, um, so those categories are all NIH and I've used the NIH um, language there, but this grantsmanship is something that Ed and I came up with um, to help you write your grants. So this one's new, this is in our own words. Grantsmanship, we are asking you, is the proposal clearly written with cohesion and impact? Are there, sec are the sec are there sections of the application that are well written? Are there sections of the application that need improvement? And this is where you can really help your um, colleague to write an effective proposal. Okay, so ask any questions about that, but I'm gonna go through some um, examples. Um, so when you get to actually doing this assignment, um, I'll get into the details of the actual homework um, in a moment. You know, I always end with that at the end of these, at these little presentations. But let's talk about kind of the steps you're gonna take to achieve that effective peer review of your colleague's proposal. The first, is that you're obviously gonna read the proposal. And as you read, thinking about um, the criteria that we just talked about, significance, innovation, approach, and grantsmanship, you're gonna think about the following things. You're gonna identify what you do and you do not understand. It's very, you don't understand how important it is for you just to tell your colleague what you, would, what you understood and what you didn't understand. Because in the end, it's your job as a proposal writer to be clear and effective, right? And if that hasn't happened in a particular area, it is just so important for you to learn about those areas that need to be rewritten and um, for clarity. Um, I, I have to admit, when I write my own grants, I wish before I went to peer review in the grant uh, in the in the study section, I could learn this because we all could use help on what would people understand and don't understand. Identify which arguments were convincing and true not. Remember, a proposal is really trying to convince your reader that you have an amazing idea that's going to change the world. And if your reader, if the person who's reading it hasn't quite convinced by that, you need to know. You need to know where your arguments need to be strengthened so that you can really provide a convincing case for your fantastic idea. And, and, and the, the comments you're gonna get here are really gonna allow you to focus your attention where you need to read more to add those convincing arguments, where you maybe just need to strengthen the language, add more impactful verbs and nouns like we've talked about before, okay? Consider if there were logical jumps in the information that left you confused. So maybe in the background and significance section, the, the concepts were laid out in a way that just wasn't as clear to you and you can think of a way to reorganize them. Please tell your colleague kind of your thoughts on how the logic worked for you. And it's even better if you're not, if you don't know that much about their field because you, they're teaching you about their field. And if, the, if that teaching process isn't coming off um, as clearly as you want, you need to know that I need to improve in that teaching that background significance and the teaching of my, my ideas. And then finally, of course, you can identify sentences or, sorry, that should be or sections that you need to read more than once. So if you have to read a section or a sentence more than once, red flag it, maybe highlight it, and let your colleague know that that one should be rewritten because if you have to read a sentence more than once, it's usually a problem, okay? 
Now, as you're reading, you're thinking about these things. Step two is for each of the thoughts you have about these um, issues in step one, you want to write that thought down. I think it's absolutely important. For me, when I review a paper, a proposal, anything, I write down immediately when I have a thought. Because, and you don't have to write even a complete thought, just write an idea of that thought down in that template that I just showed you. Because if you, if you don't write the thought down, you might forget it. And you might have that thought again while you're reading the proposal later. And that way you can reinforce that thought. So you want to write as you read so that you don't forget any comments that could be useful to your reviewer. And then remember that you can always go back and rewrite it, okay? You can always go back and refine it. So um, some tips here provide specific details instead of general vague comments. And I'll give you some examples of those in the next few slides. Specify which specific section or experiment the comments are addressing. Don't leave it to chance that you aren't being clear that this is about experiment one and aim one. Be sure you say aim one, experiment one, and then your comment. Use descriptive nouns and verbs and complete sentences to make your thoughts clear. So this is just clear, concise, impactful writing you need to use in this context too. And then just remember for every strength and weakness, we would like for you um, to write at least three comments um, of, of strengths and weaknesses, and those should be in a complete sentence, but you are welcome to expand on that idea if you feel like it takes more than a sentence. I have written up to a paragraph if I really feel like that was a critical point and I needed to make my, um, the way I felt about that point as clear as possible to my, um, to, to the proposal writer. Okay, so let's talk about a few in, in class examples. And I really wanna um, show you the difference between what, what, I, what I would call ineffective comments, vague comments, comments that are not going to be as helpful in the written, in a written format um, versus effective comments. And let me make it clear that you guys benefit, um, you know, when, when Ed and I have our proposals read, um, um, and when we get our papers reviewed, we only get the written comments. We don't have the opportunity to have the reviewer in front of us to say, you know, I guess I didn't really understand that comment very well. Could you elaborate? So what I'm trying to, you on the other hand, in your breakout sessions will have your reviewer in front of you and you can have a dialogue and it's gonna be wonderful. We're really excited for you to use this format to improve your proposals. But the fact is when you get out of this class, every other review opportunity you have, you will not be able to have that dialogue. So what we wanna do here is try to help you create the most clear, effective comments so that you don't need a dialogue to make sure your point is coming across. Okay, so here's an ineffective comment related to significance. It is novel to investigate the structural and physical uh, properties of biofilms. Um, how is it, how is it novel? You know, why is it novel? Excuse me. And by the way, the comments I'm taking here are actually taken directly from the summary statements of the Gordon proposal. That's one of those example proposals that we're encouraging you to, to take a look at um, on the NIH website. And here is the, um, here's the link to this particular proposal. And believe it or not, professional reviewers for this proposal, they wrote that sentence, which I would call a pretty ineffective comment. It's very vague. Okay, but on the other hand, one of the other reviewers great, had some really beautiful descriptive comments related to the same issue. The scientific preface of this application is that biofilm microarchitecture and mechanics are key to development, antibiotic resistance, and immune evasion in biofilm infections. Understanding this may prove a key to be key in preventing and treating biofilms. We know exactly what they think. They said biofilms are important for these reasons. This project is impactful, right? This is significant. The scientific preface of this application is that the structure and mechan mechanical properties and behavior are critical to the persistence and antibiotic resistance of biofilms. Elucidating the role of biofilm structure and mechanics may provide insight into novel approaches to treat and mitigate chronic biofilm infection. So it's much clearer in these two examples what the real viewer has seen as a positive about this application. 
Now, I'll be honest with you, for the applications they had on that NIH website, there were no, <laughs> there were essentially no weaknesses. Um, so I actually had to make up these. So forgive me if they seem a little bit um, vague uh, because they weren't, there weren't any, they actually weren't real examples. But I have seen these in my own grant. So I guess, so anyway, a weakness would be the design of the study is flawed. Well, in what way? That doesn't help me improve my grant proposal. I need to know how it was flawed. And so a better, a better comment would be, even though a method to address the biofilm mechanics is proposed, the improvements of this method over known techniques remains unclear. Oh, okay. The design was flawed because they don't yet believe that the method that I'm creating is novel and unlike anything else in the field. Okay, that means I need to make better arguments in my background and significance section that this method is unique. That's a very helpful comment for me to improve my grant. Okay, feel free to ask any questions. Let's move on to innovation. Ineffective strength comments would be novel techniques will be developed to study biotomes. What novel techniques? Which novel te which techniques in my grant did you find novel? Because I need to know where my strengths lie, okay? A much more effective comment would be specifically saying what were strengths, what were the strengths in innovation. Sophisticated imaging will be used to characterize biofilm structure and manipulative techniques will be employed to recreate these structures to better understand their role. Uh, this reviewer thought that my sophisticated imaging, I love the fact that he thought my imaging was sophisticated, this is my strength, my innovation. Relating to physical properties, i.e. spatial structure and mechanics, the Pseudomonas aeruginosa biofilms in chronic wounds, uh, uh, in chronic wounds to virulence, antibiotic resistance and immune evasion is novel and holds potential impact for improving patient outcomes and reducing development of antibiotic resistance. Much more specifically, um, specific information about innovation. Um, again, there were very few innovation weaknesses in this Gordon proposal and actually in any of the proposals that were on there. So I made these weaknesses up here. This is my own language, completely made up. Weakness, uh, the vague weakness, the ineffective weakness would be there is no innovation in the methods. You know, why? Why is my method? I thought it was pretty good, right? I even said it in my proposal. What's the problem? The methods proposed are known and standard in the field. Oh, there's no innovation because they don't see that my methods are different than what have already been produced. Okay, I need to do a better job now of arguing for the uniqueness of my methods. Okay, let's move on to approach. Um, an effective comment, use of in vivo biofilms rather than in vitro biofilms. So that, but that, but you know, what does that mean, use of in A key strength to this application is the assessment of only one pathogen, this type focus will enable the team to dig deeply into the questions posed in this application without losing focus, as would likely happen with multiple strains of bacteria. So they're very clear about what they like about this proposal. I realize now that I'm already at 610. So I think these are all posted, unless you guys really want me to read through this, I think you're getting the idea. You really want to uh, provide constructive, thoughtful, comments that can pinpoint what parts the proposal need to be further developed. That's your job. And, and actually, that's the job of any reviewer. Um, because all science, all science probably has a lot of merit to it. It just maybe isn't um, pre presented in a way that gives that, gives that idea the, the legs that it needs, OK? Um, grantsmanship is probably the one area that I would highly, highly encourage you guys to add lots and lots of comments for your for your colleagues, um, you know, what, what, what are the good stuff? The gaffe in the field, was it stated? Was it not stated? If the gaffe in the field was stated, don't just say it was stated. Tell what you heard. Like, what did you, what did you learn based on the words on that page, what the gap in the field is? Because you might write down what you think the gap in the field is, and your colleague might read it and say, wait a second, that actually isn't the gap in the field that I thought I was saying. So be descriptive so that your colleague can really see what you've read. That's the gold here. What did they read and did I get my point across? Okay, so just um, kind of backing up a little bit. So step one is to read the proposal and consider these issues. Step two is to write your thoughts down as you're reading, okay, focusing on major strengths and weaknesses. Try to avoid minor things. We really want big picture. Of course, just like any writing, use clear, concise, impactful sentences. And then once you've gotten that all done, you've read it, you feel like you've got your thoughts down on paper, now you need to go through and rewrite. Everything we write, we rewrite, <laughs> um, including reviews. So proofread and rewrite your review. 
do your comments make sense? Like now that you um, walked away from that comment and did other things and came back to that comment, does it make sense? Do I need to rewrite it? Because I, but if I don't even understand my own comment, how is somebody else gonna understand my comment? Um, do you understand why you make the comment? Are you making your point clear? I would also recommend you put first things first. Order your comments. Now that you've got all the comments, or order the comments so you put the most important comment first and then um, uh, decreasing priority because people are gonna focus on the first one, it's just human nature. Put your most important comment first. Offer advice if a section was confusing or unconvincing. How could that section be improved? That would be so helpful for when I'm writing my proposals, if I can know what part of the proposal needs to really be worked on and clarified. And then for goodness sakes, folks, run spell check. Don't have any typos and spelling errors. Um, uh, you know, that's just a, a silly thing you should never have to do anymore with our spell check programs. Okay, so here's your homework. I have a few more things to say about it. So hold on, I'll try to be quick. This homework assignment is a little bit more involved than your past ones because it involves this peer review process, which will be due, done in the breakout session. So what Ed and I decided to do is each of you will be reviewing two proposals formally for the class. And those two proposals will be reviewed as homework number 13, proposed the first proposal, and homework number 14, the second proposal. I'm only talking about homework 13 here, but the homework 14 assignment will look very much the same, just for a different proposal. Now, we have created a table for you to figure out what your proposal, what proposal you will be involved in. So here is homework assignment number 13. This is posted in Canvas. Please download it. And in this table, what you can see is for each of you, the reviewer, you're gonna be able to review two proposals. So depending on who you are, you're gonna have two proposals. So here's your name, the reviewer, and the proposals that you will be reviewing. And you can see one of those proposals will be for homework 13. That's this first column right here. And one of these proposals will be for homework 14, okay? So for homework 13, you are only responsible for reviewing using the template this homework 13 one proposal okay now the way this further will work is that okay so you'll use our template do the proposal just like we talked about and then once the review is complete you are going to upload it into canvas just like normal but you're also going to email your review to the student who wrote the proposal because the, uh, we want them to benefit from those reviews and have them to read. And there's no way for us through Canvas to kind of do that. So we're gonna ask you to email it to the person yourself. Please email it before class because in your breakout sessions on Thursday and on Monday, you're gonna be having this peer review conversation. Now, which, review, which proposers are going to be um, reviewed? That's the next table. So the table one is your review assignments. Table two here is that which proposals will be reviewed. So. The proposal that will be reviewed on January 24th, for example, in Eric Federica's group, in Federica's group are these two proposals and here are the reviewers. If you have a group of five, two proposals will be reviewed on Thursday and two proposals will be reviewed on Friday. That means that one of you reviewers will actually not do the reviewing on Thursday. You'll postpone it till Monday, but we still want you to turn in your review for homework 13 to keep you on track. And so you can see that for all sections, there'll be two proposals written, uh, reviewed on Thursday, and then two or three, depending on your group, on Friday, or on Monday, uh, our last day of class. Okay, so please take a look at that homework assignment so that you know who you're reviewing. Now, in terms of how you're gonna get access to the proposals, Ed and, ours, Ed and I have the idea, we hope this works out, that we're gonna create um, Dropbox links for all of you to access those proposals. So keep an, uh, view, uh, um, keep an eye out for an email that Ed and I will send. Um, we're hoping to send those tonight, but please forgive us if they go out in the morning, okay? All right, so my last thing is that what I'm gonna do because, what I, the last thing I wanna say is that because you're going to be writing these proposals and then talking with your, uh, your colleague about the proposals, I wanna talk about some do's and don'ts. And let me say that these are very much inspired by the same do's and don'ts that are given to us NIH reviewers before we go into an NIH review. Even though the applicant of the proposal isn't in the room, you wanna keep the conversation positive, informative, and thoughtful. So here's some do's and don'ts. In your peer mentor meeting where you are talking with your with, um, with the person who wrote your proposals. We want it to be constructive. 
So please present your comments as constructively as possible. These are not meant to be negative comments at all. These are meant to help your colleague to really create a solid proposal. So focus on helping your colleague to make the proposal the best through these constructive comments. Where possible, emphasize strengths before discussing weaknesses. I know that I like to hear about my strengths before I hear about my weaknesses. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to take my weaknesses if I know I have some strengths. So try to keep it positive in that way. Reinforce the comments of other reviewers. Remember, two of you will have reviewed the same proposal. So talk to each other. Did you guys have the same feeling? If one person didn't understand one section, did the other person understand? Or did you both not understand? Work with each other, reinforce each other comments, or where appropriate, um, you know, tell, tell um, the, the, your colleague that wrote the proposal where you have disagreements, that's fine, okay? Um, but anything that both of the reviewers don't understand or weren't convinced by, those are ones you should really focus on. Please, um, where you had confusion about the proposal, ask the other reviewers if they're understanding. So try to find those common, commonalities between your reviewers so that you can really help your colleague make the best proposal. Here's a few don'ts. Please, please, please do not just read your critiques from your templates, okay? There's nothing more boring than hearing somebody read something, okay? Instead, distill down the comment into a conversation. Think about the comment and how you can present that comment to your colleague to really make the proposal um, um, Fantastic, okay? So provide context for that comment. How your comment can help improve the proposal. Don't just read it, that's not very useful. Avoid being overly negative. I think we all can relate to this. We're the one in the hot seat. It's our proposal that's getting reviewed. Um, I'm feeling a little nervous about it because getting feedback is not easy, folks. So what do you wanna to do to make it easier for the person getting the criticism? Try to keep those positive comments. Talk about how you really liked this, but you think it would be more effective if they do that, okay? So really talk about strengthening the proposal as opposed to criticizing the proposal. Okay, and then last thing, folks, you're never an expert in anything you review. I mean, rarely, well, sometimes you are, but rarely, and it certainly you won't be for this, um, for this exercise. Don't worry if you're not an expert in the area proposal. I know when I reviewed for NIH, I was asked to what I was asked to do what they call stretch my expertise. And that meant that I would maybe review something that's not in my direct area of interest or of expertise, but you know, I knew enough that I could figure it out, right? So instead of worrying about how you don't know everything there is to know about a field, Focus on if the proposal is understandable. Um, were you convinced by the feasibility and significance? Talk about grantsmanship and how you were convinced by it. Okay, and I'll just say that there's, um, here's, don't forget to take advantage of these sample peer review summaries to write a really effective proposal. All right, I'm sorry I went till 6.20, that was not my intention, but here we are. I didn't see any questions. I hope that's because I was just crystal clear um, but um, you know that um, Ed and I are gonna peek into the breakout session, so feel free to ask questions there. Um, this is our most complex assignment because of all of the peer review, so um, please take a look at that um, so that you can ask me questions, ask Ed and I questions um, if you need to, okay? All right, I do not see any hands raised and I don't see any extra questions. So I guess we'll adjourn. Um, folks, we'll see you on Thursday. And on Thursday and, and Monday, the last days of classes, our goals are really to get you prepared for the candidacy exam. So all the other components of the candidacy exam, the prospectus, the presentation, we're gonna be focusing on. We also thought we'd throw in a real quick module on um, grant uh, fellowship opportunities for you. So there'll only be very little that will be, we're gonna really try to get you to your breakout sessions as quickly as possible those last two days.